Okay, Friday, January 21st, 2022. Right now we're looking at the continental U.S. map. This is the uh, long wave infrared map. And uh, right now in the uh, Carolinas and in parts of Georgia and up in Virginia, we're having uh, very rare ice storms. And we see that this uh, tropical moisture flow is moving right across from the Pacific, across Mexico, across the Gulf of Mexico, and right up through uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South and North Carolina, and up into Virginia, and out to the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, right now, if we look at the Doppler map for this area, we can see that, uh, that right along the coastline, all the way from South Carolina, all the way up into uh, North Carolina, and all the way up past, uh, all the way almost, well, right about to Kitty Hawk, uh, North Carolina, is all... They're having ice storms right on the right on the coast. Now, uh, I've never been in an ice storm, but uh, I've talked to people who have been, and it's uh, very dangerous because the weight of the ice uh, pulls uh, power lines down, and, and of course, you know, if you're out driving, uh, it's like being, you know, on an ice skating rink. Uh, but uh, one of the things I wanted to point out here on this Doppler map, this live Doppler map, is that. The Wilmington WSR88D transmitter, the microwave Doppler transmitter, which uh, functions, uh, it has a dual purpose. The first uh, public function that we know of is that it uh, provides uh, feedback on severe weather. But the other more nefarious uh, function of these WSR88Ds is the fact that they can uh, heat the atmosphere on demand and evaporate uh, rain precipitation we've seen that on the west coast all over the place we've seen it uh, I've shown that those examples many many times okay but in this example here we've got an ice storm which can cause a lot of a lot of deaths a lot of uh, power outages all the way up and down right on the coast and we see that this this uh, Dopp Doppler radar this uh, WSRD 88D which is uh, the Wilmington transmitter which is KLTX that's the uh, FCC call sign for these uh, high power radio transmitters is actually pointed out to see we can see that we, you can see the uh, pie shaped cutouts here from the, that microwave energy is evaporating the precipitation here this green is all rain and of course this is this is uh, ice sleet and ice and then we have snow out over here and uh, if we pan around we see that the Columbia transmitter in South Carolina which is uh, KCAE, we can see that that is uh, just not putting out much power. Uh, we do see the uh, evaporation pattern here, these uh, pie-shaped cutouts that all originate right about just north of Columbia. When this refreshes, we may get a better uh, view. Um, but uh, this transmitter is operative, and you can see the, uh, the cutouts, the evaporation pattern around the area. Now, if these uh, weather controllers wanted to, they could uh, stop and prevent these dangerous uh, ice storms that we're seeing right along the coast by just simply turning this thing around. I don't know why they've got got this thing pointed out at, at sea. It doesn't make any sense. This thing should be uh, pointed out and evaporating all this ice. That's what that would make sense, wouldn't it? But that's not what's happening. So uh, right now, there's a lot of uh, uh, people that report weather that are carrying live feeds from uh, Wilmington, for example, and other places along in this area. Uh, they're broadcasting live. They've got storm chasers and uh, different things. It's kind of interesting because this is very rare to see uh, ice, uh, you know, in 30 degree weather right here in Wilmington. And then overnight, it'll go down to, you know, 23 degrees or maybe even lower than that. Um, so there it is. You got a dop You have a, a Doppler uh, WSR 88D pointed out at sea for some reason. Uh, that makes no sense. And then you have this one over here, which is running at about one quarter the power that it, that it actually could. These are high power microwave transmitters, okay? And they beam out microwave, and they heat and evaporate water vapor in the air, just like your microwave oven that uh, you know heats the water in the food and that's how it heats the food so uh, <clears throat> there it is 
So if we look at the uh, if we look at the at the maps uh, for the uh, continental U.S., we see all this tropical moisture coming up and merging with this much colder uh, weather, which is up near the Great Lakes and all through uh, the Northeast. And uh, so we've got uh, dangerous conditions. And this is all once again originating originating from the uh, Pacific Ocean down here. And uh, looking at the water vapor map, we can see what's happening. Out here on the west coast, we've got, we've had high pressure installed for the last three days. We can see it right here. This is stationary, man-made installed high pressure. There are satellite transmitters which are heating the upper atmosphere and, and generating these uh, dry zones, as we see here. This is blocking all of our rain chances, all of this uh, tropical flow, which is uh, running into this uh, stationary uh, high pressure here and having to bounce off, and some of it's going around this way, and a lot of it's coming back around and, and up and around the other high pressure, which is installed up through this area. And also, we have a low pressure system right here, which is dropping down through uh, all these states, Idaho, Nevada, and when it gets down to about right here over LA, it just stops. It runs into this area of high pressure. And we see it right here. It just slows down. And we've got uh, high winds right now. We've got 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts currently here in the uh, Los Angeles basin and the foothills. And that will uh, last through tomorrow afternoon. So we've got no rain in the forecast. It's, this This is a low pressure system. This should be delivering rain and we see uh, this, the evaporation around that uh, vortex that strange evaporation pattern right here that's a satellite transmitter and that is modulating and maintaining a, a specific barometric pressure so that this will not develop there was a little bit of rain showing up on the Doppler over in uh, in uh, Las Vegas if we zoom out we'll probably see a little bit over there a little bit of rain over the uh, Las Vegas, Nevada area if this thing loads up. Look at this. There we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit of rain. Uh, we've got some snow over Flagstaff and the uh, surrounding area there. We've got some rain out in the uh, area between Palm Springs and Blythe. And that, that would be, uh, that's normal. That's what we should be seeing um, when we have these low pressures drop down. Okay, that one's out of order. All right, uh, so <clears throat> once again, we've got opportunities here for rain. It's uh, being blocked. If you look at the water vapor map, we can see why. Here's that man-made uh, satellite transmitter generated high pressure right there. Been sitting there for a couple, two, three days. We've had clear skies with no clouds, zero clouds. The previous days, all heavy chemtrail aerosol spraying. And as this drops down, like we've, we do have wind forecast, we, so we've got this low dropping down, and we've got high pressure right here adjacent to that low right there. And as this drops down, you've got descending air on this side, you've got a vortex spinning the opposite way, and that gener generates the wind to the south. And that's why we have these, they call them Santa Ana winds, but it's just a manufactured uh, wind event. So this high pressure is, is blockading all this, uh, tropical uh, weather which should be uh, delivering rain here in the winter time out here the jet stream is running into that high pressure and it's forced up and over into the uh, Canadian area but the big news right now is what's happening out here these ice storms on the uh, east coast all right so that's uh, the report. Um, here is the uh, surface analysis map for the uh, East Pacific. We have high pressure installed, almost 1,040 millibar right there over uh, Washington State. We've got a low pressure right there. It just moved into Southern California, and we've got high pressure right adjacent to that, and that's why we're getting these winds. There's three, trough, uh, three troughs there shown. And uh, so we're not getting any rain here in Southern California currently, 
Now, uh, on Monday, we had uh, kind of a surprise uh, rain event, which delivered uh, five sixteenths of an inch of rain on the 17th. So that brings the season total up to about 14.7 inches, uh, somewhere around there, 14.7. So that's all good, but uh, the 27% relative humidity currently, uh, it just sucks the uh, the water right out of the soil. So we end up with a dry soil, and 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 uh, it's just uh, you know not good. We need we need rain fairly frequently in order to solve these. Uh, drought conditions in the soil and start uh, getting our trees and plants back in order. Here we have a hurricane force system moving to the northeast. That'll have to ride up and over these high pressures here. Everything is pretty much blocked by all of this high pressure over the west coast. Okay, that's that's it for now. We'll keep an eye on these uh, uh, storms out on the uh, east coast. And if uh, something develops, we'll get back on with another video. Okay, that's it.